perhaps we could start by asking the professors if they want to say something to each other. <laughs> we have had a lot to yeah, yeah, perform. but, but yeah, you have. So please, if you can continue that yeah. debate. Yeah. And, and then we will take some questions from the audience. Please. You can also sit here. Yeah, um, okay. Yeah. Okay, otherwise you won't yeah, yeah. Okay. see the audience. Thank you. Yeah, yes? Um, I um, found uh, Pablo Cato's um, talk very interesting. And um, um, of course, uh, in many respects, uh, I think we agree. At the same time, um, I think, as you noted, I didn't talk about the models um, because I belong to those who think that perhaps sort of defining our research issues in terms of models, or uh, more specifically in the Nordic model, um, sort of hide some very important issues that we should uh, address more clearly. But first, a bit about, um, before I say a bit more about that, I, I think that the notion that um, there's one model and four exceptions, uh, or five exceptions, I think that uh, basically it's, um, it's well said, but it's mi completely misleading in my view, uh, because um, as I see it, um, the Nordic model is what Max Weber called an ideal type. It's sort of, uh, a sort of put, it's an idea where you can put some aspects or characteristics together. I say that this is the Nordic model and you have refer to a lot of these um, characteristics. Um, but in my view, um, what, if we really look at the Nordic models as an ideal type in the Max Weber sense, I think actually it's, it's more pragmatic, a question about, um, in this case, does uh, the empirical reality, as far as we are able to measure it, does it really fit? to the notion of a particular Nordic or universalistic model. Uh, and um, I think, um, for instance, when it comes to um, uh, an issue that you understand that I very much concerned about, except what you ended with, uh, probably, uh, about ecological sustainability and actually the survival of life on the world, as we in the world as we know it, uh, I think um, I think actually um, the, the Nordic model is not very helpful. Uh, and I think um, uh, if we, we insist on looking only on Nordic model aspects of things, I think we miss some very important things. And I think, uh, as you also referred to, um, there are some essential issues these days that are global of nature, and, and we should the approach them as such, and we should um, look for basically also global forms of solutions. Uh, and then um, I think we may have some good ideas uh, based on, on the Nordic experience, but we should be a bit more, we shouldn't assume that the Nordic ways of doing this, um, meeting these challenges are the best ways to do it. Yes, sir. Uh, I, can, I, I can't, but agree because 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 in, in my in my presentation it was indeed an, a, a kind of attempt to uh, present a historical critical uh, uh, historical critic of of, of of the ways in which uh, model the concept of model has been used and how what uh, what kind of of, of of, of, of problems uh, in the usages of the, of the concept of model uh, are included, and uh, what kind of implications it it has, so that that that, uh, that uh, using the model as 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 a, as a, as a, as a concept of, of research, I agree that uh, this kind of ideal Weberian ideal type is, is, the, is the only way of doing. But at the same time, we can't avoid seeing the concept of model as, as, as a very, very, and concept of Nordic model in, in a very, very common usage in, in public debate and, 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 
and and uh, and also in the in, in the description of the the, the wealth extent of excellence program from which we used to be funded. Yeah, yeah. So that critic of that kind of of, of usage of, of the concept of moral is it was was actually what what I tried to do, and it was in, in but it was then very very interesting and also I I think to some degree also natural to uh, to, to 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 see that we both. Uh, in our conclusions, indeed, to this, uh, uh, to the kind of limits of, 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 of national welfare states in dealing with very, very crucial and fatal problems of our day, of, of today. Okay. Uh, are there any questions, comments in in the audience about? Uh, something related to the presentations um, about the models or the model or, or the critic of, of the, the, the models or something you would like to ask about, for example, where are Nordic welfare state research or just Nordic welfare research, where should it try to, to go and, and what should it, how, how should it be, be developed? So please, any questions or comments? Hello, uh, my name is Janos Uotinen. I'm from the University of Turku, uh, doctoral candidate there. Um, <clears throat> yeah, maybe I can stand up so oh, yeah. you don't need to. Um, <clears throat> so in the list of the uh, roles of the welfare state may have in, in adapting to the climate change and so forth, I, I, to me it appeared there was one negative, possibly negative function the welfare state is also playing uh, uh, in this climate change issues. Um, in some way, it, so in some ways it appears that the social welfare system also may play a negative role in climate change as it relies on taxes and economic growth. So there, there is this question, at least from the individual point of view, like if I want to downshift, right? But, but if I downshift, then I end up hurting the welfare system. So, so in a sense, they are like intertwined, and I don't know if this would mean that we should somehow drop the welfare system. Uh, probably not, but I think this is some kind, somehow weird issue. And and yeah, it just seemed that it was missing there. So I don't know. Yeah, a comment, a question. I don't know. Um, <laughs> I think you, you touched upon a, a very important question, and and uh, but uh, my take on that is really that. Um, we are in a situation now um, where we have, in some countries, clearly a case of degrowth. And, and um, the question uh, that is actually quite interesting is how countries cope with actually uh, even negative growth, uh, as well as decreasing uh, gross domestic product, etc. Uh, and um, um, uh, this is uh, the public relations part of it. Um, Actually, if, if you look at the program, you will see that there will be a session tomorrow, 11 o'clock, that actually are dealing with, except, especially this relationship. And, and um, uh, you will also, many of us obviously be, be aware that, that there is currently, among international colleagues, a considerable discussion whether the level of consumption uh, in a broad sense, that we have in other countries, and where we also justify economic growth to sustain that level, whether that is possible. Uh, because if we look, as Max Koch and all the colleagues have done, about how much resources, how sort of much uh, footprints we leave in the northern countries, it's quite clear that this could not be generalized to the whole population. And in my view, Therefore, also, I think we should. Yeah, this is also my, one of my reasons for, for not talking about the Nordic model. Because, as you suggest, the Nordic model is, has very often been related to the idea that we need so a continuous economic growth to, and therefore also need to become more and more productive, to compete, etc., etc., meaning also that we 
push out a lot of people who could otherwise be in work if the productive demands, etc., etc. So, in other words, I don't say that we should stick to the notion that we need growth by all means. We should really ask what kind of growth is uh, ecologically sustainable and on both levels. And perhaps the big difficult issue is how can you get some sort of global redistribution where people are now living in really deep uh, economic poverty and also be exposed to some of the worst, uh, I mean, um, uh, ecological disaster, basically. How can we help them to get uh, something more uh, sort of acceptable way of life? Thank you. One, one uh, aspect, aspect uh, is, is this what uh, what 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 uh, I perhaps uh, try to try to point out is that uh, that in, the, in the, the Nordic modes of thought and action there is, uh, has been the. This uh, deep-rooted idea that, that that all good objectives are compatible and 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 and, and objectives uh, are, are, are are good if they are compatible and and uh, and uh, this is something that that is some uh, is, is very much questions uh, exactly uh, through uh, this through new new new. Uh, uh, awareness, consciousness of, 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 of ecological threats and, and threats of human life, in that sense. Uh, and, uh, but I think that, that in, in, in welfare state research, also this awareness of need of, 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 uh, of, of uh, adding or including this dimension in the research problems is, is growing. For example, in Bremen there is now a very, very large uh, research project and network on, on global social policy in which these this, this aspects are also also part of research agenda led by Herbert uh, Obinger. Uh, yeah. Are there other comments? Uh, thank you for your uh, presentations. Uh, I actually would like to continue from this uh, question that or comment that was posed here and uh, united with the discussion that you started about the models. Uh, if, you, if we aim, as uh, uh, Björn said in the presentation, that in the future welfare uh, uh, research will help to build up uh, uh, socially uh, just and politically sustainable uh, uh, carbon neutral society, I, I think that was the phrase that you used. And if we think about it in terms of models, welfare models, do they open up new perspectives for doing it or are they kind of uh, narrowing down the possibilities that we will see? I would like to see uh, hear your elaborations on this issue. I think you raise a very big question, uh, and uh, we have already touched a bit about that here, but I think um, what is becoming more and more obvious for me, at least, is that um, if we are going to achieve uh, a sort of transition towards um, a, a climate neutral society, we need to avoid that this is a sort of made by a top-down decision. That there are some uh, uh, people like us in high positions and politicians uh, in high position who say that now this has to happen, that we need to cut uh, the, our consumption 80% or 70% or whatever uh, on this or this, uh, air, in these or these areas. And I think what could be an argument for the Nordic model is that we have still a fairly high level of both political participation and participation in civil society. That is perhaps not in the core of the definitions of the Nordic model we have talked about so far, but there may be some arguments for saying that uh, to the extent that we are fairly equal in economic and social terms in the Nordic countries, we have relatively few very rich and we have relatively few very poor uh, living in the streets, uh, in, et cetera, et cetera. And that we have a fairly high level of uh, social and political participation, that people go and vote, they are 
quite a lot of people are acting in parties, etc. That this is a basic also for creating uh, some sort of public deliberation for a topic. Talk a bit like uh, Habermas that th there should be a discussion about the party should of course be based on facts. What what's happening out there with the climate? Because we can't see all the things. We see some of the consequences, but. Um, bad weather, or as uh, some people call it, uh, in uh, politicians know always said all the day, um, bad weather is not the same as climate change. Uh, and and uh, I think that if we had sort of some sort of fact-based open discussions, that would be probably make it more reasonable or more likely to, to be, to, to create a, a society uh, also in other parts of the world, but also elsewhere, where we sort of accept that we must base our use of, for instance, of um, resources in much more on circulation. I mean, we know how much things we throw away. Uh, and a lot of these things are usable. They could be, uh, there are a lot of minerals. Copper is uh, something that we now are uh, going to, to be short of in a very short time, but there are a lot of things we copper that we just throw away without really realizing that that's happening. So I think that broad deliberation is important to avoid that we get some kind of political uh, backlash when we, uh, at some point in the future, turn to a more ecological, sustainable society. Thank you. There was one. Hello, Jung Christ uh, from Roskilde. I was just wondering, what do you think should be the unit or what would be promising ways of making comparisons to the unit be countries? We mainly talked about the societal level up here or should it rather be on the local level because we have not just five different national models but we have 98 local versions of the Nordic model in the Danish context and I guess more in the other Nordic countries, i.e. that what is very distinctive about the Nordic model is on the welfare side of the welfare state and that welfare state is actually locally provided. Um, so are we going to shift to another level, for example the local? Are we going to shift to program level? So if we are going to move on with the evidence-based turn, are we then going to learn what policy programs are working better for certain particular groups? So going down into that sort of sub-national level, that's something I would like to know. How do we make Nordic comparisons when it's perhaps not the nation state that is the relevant unit? In any case, the nation state and national society still are relevant units in comparison. But, uh, but, uh, but, uh, but taking seriously that, that they are not the only relevant units. And so, for, uh, indeed, comparing local co lo local co communities, uh, comparing uh, uh, cross-border re uh, uh, regions, and, and, and uh, already in politics, of course, we all the time see com uh, comparison in, in part also in research between between say Europe, U.S., China, uh, and the, uh, or, or East Asia, so that we already have kind of wide range of, of, of comparative settings, not so often actually in research, but in ways in which political agendas are set. I think. European Union is a history of, 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 of history of European Union is very much a history of comparisons between, between Europe and the US and Japan and China and so on. And, uh, and Somehow, not only as researchers participating in that, but also looking at different comparative settings as a part of our research object. See, looking politics as, as, as practices of making comparisons and then somehow at the, from that point of view also finding relevant units, relevant <laughs> levels of comparison for, for our, our own. That's a very general way of seeing it, but, 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 but in any case, not dropping out the nation states and national states. Yeah. Um, 
I think uh, John Christ race is a very important question. Uh, actually, I, I agree with probably in many respects that um, I think uh, the nation state for many purposes are still relevant, but uh, then I wouldn't start with the notion that some models, um, um, that we are sort of saying that a nation is a model. Uh, the model has no Norwegian no model or the Danish model or whatever. I think we should, uh, as I see it at least, uh, start more with what are the critical issues? What are the really global scale problems we are facing? And, and how can we, in best way, uh, find solutions? And there I think we could say that in some cases the solutions may be actually at the national level uh, or at the sort of regional level as the European Union or whatever. And in some cases it could be at, at the local or regional level uh, below the national level. And it's, it really depends on what issue we are discussing. But uh, as you now heard me saying uh, sometimes, I mean, some of these things we are now faced with can't be solved in the Nordic countries. However much we work together with each other, we have to find ways of pressing for global solutions and we have to get uh, the countries that are now resisting, like um, big countries in the West, uh, that where they have a president who deny that there are problems in this area with climate change. Uh, and as long as he responds every time there is a new study by some big scale American institution who said that um, this and this is happening, he just said, I don't believe it. I mean, basically, I think um, we, on one hand, we should not accept uh, that uh, that kind of official, if to the extent that that is the official American's uh, uh, position, but we should certainly work with, for instance, people in California, where the state of California is actually much more pro that kind of development we are talking about now, and of course we should work together with colleagues, uh, both in our own uh, disciplines, but also across disciplines, to wh what are sort of the best, what is the really the best practice in the areas we we would like to improve very well. Thank you. There is one final question left, uh, a short question, short answers perhaps. Be long question and very short answers. I'm afraid. <laughs> um, uh, I, uh, I think the, there's one thing that has been missing, and, and uh, um, this is about sort of norm normative issues, or, you know, underpinning what we perceive as the Nordic model. Uh, um, and you've discussed a lot of sort of important policy choices and policy challenges, but uh, it, it sort of remind me of, of uh, this um, Alice in the Wonderland. Uh, she's walking uh, across a path and then she comes to a fork and she doesn't know where to go, left or right, and then and there's a cat and she asks the cat, you know, which way to go and, and, and then uh, the cat asks, uh, you know, where do you want to go? And she says, I don't know. Well, then it doesn't matter. You can choose either way, um, and I think that that uh, there's an um, uh, important issue in, in terms of trying to clarify where we want to go, and uh, we sort of assume that there's a common value of egalitarianism and, and so on. But uh, given uh, changes in in in, in values uh, and given changes in in the welfare state institutions, I don't think we can take this, this for granted. And on top of that, we also have a changing composition of the population where um, a, a growing part of the population have uh, roots in, in other kinds of cultural contexts where, where sort of these value issues uh, uh, are far from, from granted. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, this uh, is not, not a Nordic, Nordic uh, Confidence in, in different virtuous circles, it has actually been a very much a kind of normative issue. I think that, that this old old idea which, which framed this uh, making of the Nordic welfare state, welfare states, was very much a kind of 
idea that, that uh, more, eco- more, more social equality and more, more economic growth and, and widening democracy are supporting each other. This kind of, as Gunnar Myrda put it, circular cumulative causation between these. And now the problem is, is, is that which of these values or normative standards are something that can, can be extended uh, uh, over the national borders, actually. What does social equality, which was a kind of solidarity and within the national society, economic growth, widening democracy within the national society? I think it's much more kind of not no. Uh, it's, 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 what, what is what is it? now this uh, great challenge is, is that, that this kind of confidence within the national society seems to be very you know, maybe a counterproductive unintended consequences or intentional action are, are, are threatened. Would you like to say yeah. something very quickly? Um, I agree with you, Joachim Palmer, that this is very much about the values and, and uh, where you want to go. Um, and I don't think really we are in the position of Alice uh, asking the cat. And I think, um, to, I think for most people actually here in this room, I think it's quite clear that we don't want a world where um, half of the world are starving and uh, going under in some sort of ecological disaster and we can, for the time being, sit peaceful uh, in other parts of the world and, and still enjoy the way of life we have. So I think, it, sort of obviously, there is a basic norm here about uh, universal equality and that, or uh, global justice, and I think um, that, uh, for the time being, is a sufficient direction, I think, to know where we are going. Thank you. Okay, thank you. We are a bit behind the schedule, but uh, I would like to thank the, the speakers. Perhaps we could give them an applause once again. <laughs>